talk, and I listen. Square One TV was one of my favorite television shows as a kid, and it taught me so much about mathematics in school that it put me ahead of most students in my grade level. And when it came to math in 5th and 8th grade, I tested off the charts. It was also a highly entertaining show, and it gave us some amazing music videos, comedy sketches, fake game shows, and comic series. It also gave us the flagship segment of the show, MathNet. The Dragnet spoof of two LAPD later NYPD mathematicians solving crimes by using math instead of weapons, and it's still a series that holds up 30 years later. To start this new quick, and I mean quick, little series about the history of Square One, I figured I would start by ranking episodes of MathNet. It's a fib, but it's short. Here we go with 10 excellent MathNet episodes. Just a reminder that this is a subjective list, and everyone has their opinions. These are mine, so enjoy. Number 10, The Case Off the Record. This Season 5 episode is about the shady dealings of a record company that is creating horrible music and boosting the numbers for profit. So the math netters go undercover as a rock group recording the oddly catchy tune Without Math as their new number one hit. They're able to infiltrate the system and bust the record company producer Morris Norris at his own game. By no means a great episode in terms of plot or story or use of math, but what makes this episode stand out so much is that it features the one and only Weird Al Yankovic as a radio DJ. Although not Weird Al's first Square One appearance, it is certainly him at his absolute most, well, Weird Al. Oh, and what was the name of the rock group that the math netters play? The Googles. The Googles! We had no idea then what that word would later mean. None! In case you aren't familiar, Google is the name of a sort of popular search engine on the internet or so I've heard. Number 9. The Problem of the Missing Baseball In the pilot episode of MathNet, which was shot in 1985, a young man named Howie is playing baseball with his friends when the ball turns up missing. By analyzing the angles in which the ball would have landed, it is determined that the ball must be in the house of a nearby resident. Except there is one small problem. Her house is stolen. Yes, her entire house. This episode is fast-paced, funny, and educational. A great early episode. MathNet had no early installment weirdness and figured itself out almost immediately. Also of note, the computer tech was not Debbie, but rather Ginny and is played by Tyra Farrell. Number 8. The Case of the Unkidnapping Ah, the former theater nerd in me loves this one. A washed-up Broadway star named Lauren Bacchanal is kidnapped, and her young, hungry understudy Eve Adams is selected to take over the role. This leads to the idea that Adams was the one who kidnapped her for the sake of getting the role, something that doesn't seem like too much of a stretch, speaking from experience. Anyway, the episode focuses on the math netters finding Bacchanal, proving Adams' innocence, and of course, ends with a show-stopping musical number. This is an overall great episode with a very satisfying ending. Bacchanal is played by Tammy Grimes, who is a Broadway legend, but had one of the most failed shows in the history of television. See my list of the top 10 failed CBS shows for more on that debacle. Number 7. The Mystery of the Maltese Pigeon If there is one thing MathNet thrived at was paying homage to some of the most classic movies of the 1940s, and this might be the best one of them. In this direct send-up of the film noir classic The Maltese Falcon, the MathNetters are tapped to protect a priceless work of art, but it is still stolen, and then stolen again. This story, which has a twist after twist, is unique in that the math netters even admit to not using a lot of conventional math to solve their problems. Instead, they use logic, hypothesizing motives behind the thefts, and of course, good old-fashioned risk-taking. Great episode, well acted. Number 6. The Problem of the Missing Monkey This Season 1 classic focuses on the story of Grunt, the prized gorilla who escaped from the zoo and seemingly went on a major crime spree robbing convenience stores and grocery stores across L.A. Except Grunt's best friend, played by the pre-Simpsons era Yardley Smith, knows that Grunt would never do such a thing, and she sticks by him through and through. 
The end of the episode is quite spectacular for a show of this nature with a standoff, or I guess in this case, a climb-off on the Hollywood sign. This was the first episode of Mathnet that I ever saw, and in so many ways is one of the most memorable. Number 5. The Case of the Strategic Weather Initiative An episode with one of the more complex storylines in the series, this Season 3 Beast focuses on an airplane that has the ability to control the weather, but it turns up missing and it becomes a hot commodity among some of the world's most evil people. What makes it worse is that after it is disconnected from its cooling system, it will cause a massive explosion after a certain period of time if it is not returned. This episode is excellent for its race against the clock nature, the variety of great characters, its humor, its drama, and one of the more interesting endings which possibly can't be made today. Yeah, just watch it for yourself. It's still great. Number 4. The Problem of the Trojan Hamburger Mathnet, especially in its first season, was infamous for its send-up of classic films of the 1940s, see the Maltese Pigeon from earlier. This episode played homage to the great Citizen Kane amidst its outstanding story. While the Mathnetters try to figure out how to get a giant hamburger inside of the house of Orson Charles Kane, his priceless despair diamond is stolen in the process, and a beloved clown is kidnapped. Using all of their skills, the team puts together a plan to link every single connection to the story and save the day. There are several plot twists, a great finish, but sadly, no childhood sleds. And if you don't get that joke, then stop what you're doing right now and go see Citizen Kane. It is one of the greatest movies of all time. Number 3. The Trial of George Frankly there is no doubt that George Frankly is one of the most beloved characters ever for a children's television show, and thus it is awful to see him in this state arrested for robbing a bank. The case examines how they could disprove that George wasn't in town for the robbery, only to be swindled by the one person who could prove his time away. The last three parts of the show are focused in the courtroom as George attempts to claim his innocence, until he surprisingly admits his guilt? But is it really George? Or is it a fraud? Come for the amazing courtroom drama, stay to see George in his extremely comical and somehow wildly conservative underwear. Number 2. The Case of the Great Car Robbery While the episode itself is milk toast at best through four parts, Friday's Part 5 more than makes up for it. When cars across Los Angeles begin disappearing at record rates, the Mathnetters create a sting operation involving George hiding out in a dummy vehicle in hopes of that vehicle being stolen. The car is eventually heisted and it's off to the races to stop the thieves. For an afternoon children's television show on a small budget, the action is quite intense. This Season 2 episode features great acting, great production, and a great ending to a story that almost goes in a direction viewers might not have been expecting. Every time this one aired, I couldn't miss it, especially that fifth part episode with its non-stop action and realistic drama. And the number one most excellent episode of Mathnet, The View from the Rear Terrace. Could you ever imagine a send-up of Rear Window that might actually be as good as the five-star Hitchcock classic starring Jimmy Stewart, Grace Kelly, and Raymond Burr? Mathnet was on point for this parody, creating a story that wasn't just hilarious, but also very compelling. With Kate Monday laid up after knee surgery, it's up to George to figure out why there has been a series of bizarre bank pranks. This leads to a phenomenal multi-tiered climax involving time bombs, model airplanes, and a grandfather clock that could have put a hole in Los Angeles. Easily the most well-written, well-acted story of all the Mathnet episodes. I've probably seen this episode 313 times and each time is just as great as the last. Kudos, mathematicians.